Hi, welcome to Calypso Tutorials. In this tutorial, we'll see how to work with Action Set. An Action Set is nothing more than a set of actions that you can call at any time you want, wherever you want. An Action Set can either be local or global. Local Action Sets are defined at the form level and are available to be executed only within the form scope. Global action sets are defined at the project level and are available to be executed anywhere in the project. The primary usage of an action set is to prevent the duplication of actions. Whenever you need to call the same set of actions in more than one place, you should use an action set. Check out the licensing management being done in the opening of the first form. Let us say that after the warning of invalid license, showing the licensing form or closing the project, we always want to display a message and show the licensing form. Let's first replicate the behavior in all the cases where the licensing can fail. This means we need to create the same actions several times. Instead of that, we can copy the message box in the show form, create the local action set, Let's call it LAS no license and paste here both actions. The final step is to replace in the opening of the form those actions by the call to the action set. I'm going to comment this one and add execute local action set choosing the no license one. Copy paste here and here and finally comment the actions above. That's it. Whenever we want to change the behavior in case of no license, we just need to do it once in the local action set. This reduces workload and errors. We've created a local action set because we only need it in this form. If it was needed elsewhere, you should consider creating a global action set. Let's give it a try. We get the message, invalid license. We paste here the license code and then we exit to restart the application. Before we proceed, let me show you how to remove those barcode errors when running your project on the simulator. Go to the actions and around the barcode actions, you can add an if and use the keyword case simulator. If it's false, you are not on the simulator. So let's say that if we are not on the simulator, we do the barcode connect, otherwise we won't. We can copy and paste in the close form for the disconnect. Save and test again. A good example where a global action set is needed is when you want to check if you can reach MIS communicator. This is the type of functionality that you would need in several forms throughout the project. Let's then create a global action set and call it global action set check connection. The first action we need is ping MIS communicator. Select communication profile, specify the target. And let's set hidden to yes so the user don't know what you're doing. So if the temporary variable that holds the value is different from one, it means MIS communicator wasn't reached. In that case, we can do a secondary test to evaluate if the problem is in the connection itself or if maybe MIS communicator isn't started. Although a ping function exists, new operating systems like Android and Windows Phone tend to not allow this type of feature. A good alternative is trying to connect to google.com through a socket. Let's do a socket connect to google.com on port 80. If it fails, the problem should be in the connection itself. If it's successful, 
a MIS communicator is probably down. Don't forget to close the socket afterward. Time to return a result to whomever calls this action set. In case of failure connecting to Google, let's return minus 1. And in case of success, minus 2. Finally, we only need to close the socket if it connects, so let's drag it to the else. A scenario where we can use this action set is in the opening of the form Customers. If you remember, this is a form who displays data from an online table, so if the refresh fails, we can try to understand if the error came due to a connection failure. After the message box, let's call the global action set. To capture the returned value, we need to expand the advanced options and define a target. After the execution, let's evaluate the result. If it's equal to minus 1, we output a message box saying no connection. If it's equal to minus 2, we say unable to connect to the server, check if MIS communicator is active. Let's try it. So, everything working. Now, let's stop MIS Communicator and open the form again. We have the default message and then we can see the specific message. Now, I'm going to disable my internet connection just to exemplify. We have the default message and then we can see the specific message. If you want, you can do something as simple as this. After the generic error message on the refresh, you can show a status window and just say trying to diagnose. Just don't forget to close the status window afterwards. Let's do one more test. Login. MIS communicator now is running, so we can connect. Stop it again. Customers. Generic message. Now ping MIS communicator, and you can see the message displaying trying to diagnose. Let's just wait a few seconds until it finishes and no connection and the message disappears. Another usage of an action set is to be able to run a timer. A timer is a countdown who runs an action set when it reaches zero, restarting the countdown again after the execution of it. Therefore, you can define a time to run a certain action set every 10 seconds, for instance. Although a timer is always defined at the form level, Timers can run either local or global action sets. You can have up to 10 simultaneous timers per form. And a timer runs even if the form isn't the active one. So let's say you want to let the user test the application for a few minutes. And then you close it if he doesn't have a license. First thing to do is create the action set with the necessary actions. I'm going to create a local action set. Call it LAS close project and we only need the close project action. The next step is to rename the timer handler that we are going to use. I'll call it no license. This way we know that we are using it and for what. Finally, all we have to do is to start the timer and we want to do that whenever the application isn't licensed. So we go to the local action set we've created before and Let's comment this show form and then add the action start timer. And 
for test purposes, let's say that it has to be run every 10 seconds, which means 10,000 milliseconds. And we say to run the LAS close project action set. That's it. Now let's delete the license file in the simulator folder and try again. So we get the warning. Let's wait 10 seconds and the project closes automatically. So far, we've created a timer that actually only runs once. Let's say that you want to log the GPS coordinates every 5 minutes. I'm going to create a local table to hold the data. Let's call it GPS log, create two columns, latitude, longitude, select no and close. Now. Let's create a global action set called log coordinate. Add the action GPS get coordinates. What it does is get coordinates to the temporary variable. And we don't need the altitude, so we can simply do a backspace and save. I'm going to rename the variables longitude, latitude. and afterwards, we'll insert them in the new table. In the GPS log, we want to specify latitude and longitude and save. All we have to do now is, in the opening of the first form, after all the licensing, use GPS Connect. I won't be able to demonstrate this feature working, so it doesn't matter the definitions I input here. Don't forget to disconnect in the closing of the form with GPS Disconnect. And also, let's move the GPS actions so that they don't run in the simulator. Afterwards, we need to start the timer. So, let's rename it first. We'll call it GPS log. Back to the actions. Now, start timer. GPS log timer. We just need to define the frequency that we want. In this case, we can do it every minute. We want to execute the log coordinates global action set, and in this particular case, we'll set the thread mode to yes. This means that Calypso will run the action set in a parallel process without interfering with the application execution. So, you should be careful with the error management in the action set, because if you display any kind of message, the results may be unexpected. Therefore, when running action sets in thread mode, it's advisable to avoid user interaction and stop the timer before the GPS disconnect. Go to the global action set and let's comment the error management. That's it. Deploy our application, go outside and find GPS signal to try it. Congratulations, you've concluded the tutorial about action sets.